How are you? It's so good to see you today. There's been a lot of talk, there's been a lot of angst. I feel like there's a lot of pent up energy and I'm not sure why. What we're talking today about is 1.2 lenses, 1.4 lenses and 1.8 lenses. Now, as those numbers would suggest for those who are uninitiated, there's not very much difference between the three. And for those who are initiated, there's not very much difference between the three. The difference between these lenses is minor from a light collecting point of view and also from a depth of field point of view. Now depth of field is what we're talking about right here. And that is the fact that the background that you can see right here behind me is out of focus. We are shooting on the 85 mm Z 1.8. That's out of focus. If we were on a 1.4 or a 1.2, it would be a little more out of focus. But also the potential for me falling out of focus would be larger as well. So there's a lot of issues to weigh up when you are shooting with lenses at 1.4, 1.2, 1.8. There are pros and cons. The main reason for me creating this video, both Nikon and Canon have brought new camera systems to the market in the last 18 months. This is their mirrorless systems. Both of these companies have been making full frame censored lenses or full frame sized lenses for let's say roughly 50 years. One slightly longer, one slightly less. These guys, these companies, they know how to make full frame lenses. So when they had the opportunity to rebuild their mounts from scratch, and that's in the case of the Canon RF mount, and in the case of the Nikon Z mount, they were able to apply everything they knew about their old DSLR mounts and SLR mounts, throw it out the window, and they were able to start again from scratch. What both of those companies came up with 18 months ago, of course, Sony has done something similar, but Sony did it almost 10 years ago. So I'm just putting Sony in a slightly different space. I'm not putting it in a different space to say it is better or worse. They simply started this process significantly earlier than when Canon and Nikon did. So Canon and Nikon coming so late to this space have created mounts with a very large aperture, as in the size of the hole, with a very short distance between the mount and the sensor. Now, what this has done has allowed for a complete change in the way they can choose to design lenses. Now, just to stop on that for a moment, we can see, I think we can see, that some of their lens design with their new mirrorless mounts perhaps, maybe, is no different from their uh, original 35mm designs. They've just put a spacer in. I think that is perhaps happening. It's, hard, it's really hard to say. But certainly, with some of their lenses, they are doing things they have never done before. For example, Canon has given us a 28 to 70 zoom that is 2.0 instead of 2.8 on the f-stop. That is a significant advancement. That is a significant change. In the case of Nikon, they have given us the Noct, which is, you know, some people will not agree that it's uh, as amazing as I would say it is. That is showing us another advantage of what these mounts can create. So with this new engineering, we are seeing new types of lenses, new opportunities. I don't think either manufacturer has really shown us 
the full length and breadth of what can come from this. I think we're only just starting to scratch the surface. Canon have given us some amazing 1.2 lenses. We have the 50, we have the 85. These are out. You can buy them today. Fantastic, and this is showing what the R cameras can do. Nikon has taken a different path, and they have decided to give us 1.8 lenses, which are optically spectacular, smaller, and cheaper. So Canon have taken one path, and Nikon largely, because this is not black and white. I think Nikon have created one or two interesting lenses. Canon have created three or four interesting lenses uh, at the higher end. And so they're doing it a slightly different way. I can guarantee you in two years time they'll converge and it'll be pretty similar. But what Nikon have done is they have given us these 1.8 lenses, which as we know there's the, the, 20, the announced 20, the 24, the 35, the 50, the 85. I've got four, what have I got? I've got the 35, the 50, the 85. Yeah, don't have the 24 yet. They are all optically great with the 85 and the 50 just being absolutely stellar. Where this is all leading to is if you look at Canon's roadmap and if you look at Nikon's roadmap, neither of them have 1.4 lenses. Why is this? Why on either of these roadmaps can we not see a 1.4 lens anywhere? Logic would suggest that there is no need now for them to make 1.4 lenses. Why? Because of the new mount. But what is replacing the 1.4? Well, because the new mounts are offering more flexibility and more opportunity, what was once a 1.4 is now a 1.2. So what is the 1.8? The 1.8 of today. In the days of SLR and DSLR, a 1.8 was a workmanlike lens. They were cheaper, they were smaller, they were... This is not always the case, but most of the time, they were not quite as optically good as, say, a 1.4. And I will reiterate, this was not always the case. It should have been, because the 1.4s were always significantly more expensive. So what is the 1.8 today? What's it become? Because I absolutely can say to you that the 1.8s that I have used in the Z system, of which I've now used three of them for extended periods of time for both videography and photography, I can absolutely swear by these lenses in a professional space. These lenses are either equal to, or really, genuinely, they outperform the F lenses of the same specification. So again, logic says to us, if a 1.4 has become a 1.2, then a 1.8, that's still a 1.8, is perhaps a 1.4. I know it's a bit strange thinking. And what I'm seeing is the 1.8s of new are actually optically better than the 1.4s of old. So ultimately, the umbrella statement of all of this is you cannot look at a 1.8 lens from Nikon or Canon. I can't speak so much to Sony because I haven't explored it as much and their mount is slightly different. And the 1.8 lenses I have are from 2013. But a comparison is coming up very soon on that. I just want to be a bit more precise about that. These 1.8 lenses, they're absolutely better. So as I said in a previous video, don't be beguiled by that number. Don't be afraid of that number. These lenses will, whether it's from Canon or Nikon, and perhaps Sony as well, these lenses will delight you for their optical performance, their size and their price. They way outperform 1.8 of old. So to reiterate, there is no 1.4s on anyone's roadmap, Canon or Nikon. We're not talking about Sony because they started their mirrorless system almost a decade ago now. Canon and Nikon have had the advantage of seeing what's going on and pushing these uh, mounts even further, and thus we don't see 1.4s. I can't speak for if any third party has done that. Perhaps they have, but of course they're third parties, so that comes with all the third party baggage. 
ultimately, as end users, which is what we are, we are getting more bang for our buck. And in the world, that can only ever be a good thing. And the reality is your 1.8 glass for the majority of people is gonna blow you away. And unless you really need that ultra thin depth of field that a 1.2 provides, maybe it's like less than a centimeter at this sort of distance, which uh, I'm probably about six feet, seven feet from the camera. Unless you need that, I think you could find in both the Canon system and the Nikon system that the 1.8 glass will thoroughly impress you. I look forward to coming back to this conversation again when I can put two absolute flagship lenses next to each other. And that will be the 70 to 200 EDFL of the old DSLR system and the new Nikon 70 to 200 Z mount lens. I would consider the uh, F mount 70 to 200 to be one of Nikon's very best lenses ever made for the DSLR. So if anything is going to rival something in the Z system, it will be that lens. So I very much look forward to seeing how they, those two compare. And this might be a chance where we can really see lenses which are theoretically exactly the same, 70, 200, 2.8 lenses, same size, same weight, they're very similar looking. What have they done differently? So I look forward very much to talking about this further. I'm hoping the uh, Z20, mil 1.8 is out soon obviously the world has slowed down a little bit of late and there's perhaps every chance that that lens is running a little bit late to the best of my understanding it's supposed to be out in the next week or so so we can further explore 1.8 lenses and how freaking awesome they are as usual, everybody, I know as more and more of us continue to use these lenses, there's more and more people getting into the Canon mirrorless, more and more people getting into the Nikon mirrorless, more and more people getting into the Sony mirrorless systems. I'd love to know how you're finding, if you're using in any of those systems, the 1.8 glass, and if you have 1.8 glass versus 1.2 or 1.4 glass, are you seeing any difference? Most people wouldn't get both a 1.8 and a 1.2. I don't think traditionally that's what we would have done. But what's interesting now is these 1.8 lenses are so good that is, you, you can use them as workman-like lenses and they can be used for the pro stuff. They're that good, no question. Especially, uh, I, I could speak from professional experience in regards to the Z versions. So then the 1.2s become these kind of high-end really high quality lenses. So what, is, what does this mean? I think there, and I think there's a paradigm there where you could kind of have both, which is probably music to the manufacturer's ears. And ultimately, could these lenses, as I have said in the past, like with the Noct, watch this video here, they w could be aimed basically to be cine glass, cine quality, cine level. Mm. Interesting stuff for us to talk about in the comments below. As usual, I would love to hear from you and you. If you like what you hear, please subscribe so we can see each other again. Uh, please like, please share, it makes us all smarter. If you'd like to see over 150 videos, please click down here. I'll see you soon, so, so soon.